Hello there, people of YouTube! It is Wheeler95 here, and today I am going to tell you everything you need to know about drifting at an advanced level. Now, last week we covered drifting at a basics level. If you are interested in that, be sure to take a look at the description and or the pinned comment, and I will have a link where you can jump right from this to that. So, you've mastered the basics of drifting grown from the little automatic with the cart to the inside drifting manual bike. So today we will be covering various drifting techniques such as slip drifting, chain slip drifting, spin drifting, and a whole lot more. First, the slip drift. Now a slip drift in Mario Kart Wii refers to any kind of drift in which you do not go through a hop. Now this is useful because you skip the airtime that comes with the hop, therefore you save time. Now there are a couple different ways to perform a slip drift. The easiest and definitely the most consistent is to, you know, charge a drift and once the mini turbo has been or has been successfully charged, you want to wheelie and then immediately drift after. Please note that this technique becomes significantly more difficult if your drift is not a hard drift. Now a hard drift is uh, well, a drift in which the analog stick is completely to the left or completely to the right. If you are soft drifting or using the 45 degree notch and the in-between angles, then this technique becomes more difficult. Also, I'm not sure if this is entirely 100% true, but I've also noticed that slip drifting is more difficult on downward slopes. In my opinion, the Flame Runner is the easiest of the relevant vehicles to do this technique with, followed by the Spear slash Torpedo, and then the Mock Bike. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but something about the Mock Bike's drift makes it more difficult for me to do slip drifts properly. Be sure to let me know in the comment section down below if you agree with me on that, especially if you are a top player. Chaining slip drifts is especially useful on longer turns, such as the spiral on N64 Bowser's Castle, and also in quick changes between left and right drifts, such as the beginning of Mushroom Gorge. Slip drifts not only refer to chaining drifts, like I said, but any kind of drift in which you do not hop. So if you are airborne and you wish to start a drift as soon as you land, simply hold the drift button shortly before hitting the ground. Now you can also get slip drifts on random little bounces throughout the courses. Here I will provide a couple of examples. So we're on Moonview Highway and I noticed I was bouncing. So what I did was I mushroomed and then I know that, that terrain is kind of bouncy, so I kind of drifted in the area that is bounciest, and I managed to get a slip drift there. Now keep in mind that slip drifts like these are not very consistent, so I would advise that you do not go for these kinds of slip drifts until you have a pretty good idea and feel for what the course is like. This one on Luigi Circuit here happened completely by accident, and I had no idea that that was possible, but there it is. And over here we have DK Mountain, probably the biggest bouncy castle of them all, and I just managed to get a random slip drift there, so just thought it'd be cool to add that. And the final useful application for slip drifting is when landing from a ramp. Now it's very slight, but you might notice that here on Koopa Cape, I get, a, I get two different kinds of slip drifts actually. So, first, as you can see, I land and I very slightly drift to the side. It's very subtle, but if you look very closely, you'll notice it, and that's mainly just for alignment purposes. And off the second ramp, I do a drift trick to get lower air, but I know that this part of the terrain allows you to get a bounce here, so I use that as an opportunity to get a slip drift. So the next kind of tech that I'm going to explain to you is called a spin drift. Now there are spin drift actual drifts, and there are spin drift hops. 
The hop is mainly useful for alignment purposes and it is done by hopping to a direction and then quickly flicking the analog stick to the other direction. Now this is actually a lot more difficult with the Wii Wheel and I would not recommend practicing it with the Wii Wheel just because motion controls makes it unnecessarily difficult. So this has a couple useful applications involving being able to take turns just as it in a different angle which is useful if it's if you have a, a bad angle approaching a turn or if you need to get around something on RBC at the rail shortcut there's a pretty good example of using a spin drift to get around the corner now while not completely necessary this gives you a much better angle for the straight and lowers your chance almost entirely of hitting the wall and on Toad's Factory you can use spin drifts to get around the stompers at the beginning and the final use for spin drifting which I'm realizing now that I forgot to mention earlier is to gain more height now when you spin drift you stay in the air for slightly longer than a regular hop now this allows you to clear gaps more easily like the Mushroom Gorge Gap Jump. This is also sometimes used for wall clips, but I will explain that more in a different video. Soft drifting is basically where you put the analog stick between 0 and 90 degrees using the in-between angles to charge mini turbos faster. Now the way I do this is mainly by feel, so I'm not really the best at explaining it, and I'm also not the best at doing soft drifts. Notably, Luke is pretty great at them. And this is useful on nearly all turns because the faster you charge your mini turbo, the fewer drift frames you have, and that means you can get to your wheelie sooner. So the main takeaway from this, if you're not a super top player, is to basically just charge your mini turbo mini turbos as fast as you can. Now, when charging a mini turbo, you should do it in like one complete sweep, that's how I kind of think of it in my head, where you don't want to rock back and forth between left and right. If you're doing a right drift, then it should be in the right hemisphere of the, of the control stick the entire time throughout the drift. So once you get that down, then you should improve your turns quite significantly. The next technique is called delayed drifting, and I probably should have put this first because it's easily the most simple. And to do it, basically, you, when you are drifting in manual mode, you hop and you want to avoid turning at all until you're just about to hit the ground. And in short, this basically just allows you to charge mini turbos faster, and it will make your driving look a lot cleaner. So definitely practice this on every single turn. Now at a high level you will end up having to do different kinds of drifts on different kinds of turns but if you're not sure what you want to do or you're not sure what's fastest delayed drifts are a pretty safe bet. Since acceleration is pretty awful on many of the top vehicles people resort to doing what is called a standstill mini turbo. Now this is done by slowing down to a stop or if you're getting hit, then you're already at a stop, then you hit the drift button, and then right after you hit the gas button, and this allows you to charge what is called a standstill mini turbo. Now, this is useful if you get stuck in the off-road, you drive back to the track and you do a standstill mini turbo, so that way you can start at a top speed. Pretty neat. Uh, the last technique is called an auto hop, and I had footage for this and I don't know where it went and also I cannot be bothered to uh, re-record it just because this will only be useful to a very 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 select few of you and those of you who will be useful to probably already know how to do it but basically it's done by doing a drift in one direction and then you pause while still holding the drift and then while you are paused you buffer a drift in the complete opposite direction, unpause, and your vehicle should do kind of a small hop. Now the only real main use for this is on Peach Gardens, 
at a world record level, so again, can't really be bothered to get more footage for that. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you are new. Support is always appreciated. Next month, I will be covering everything you need to know about ramps, so stay tuned for that on the third Saturday of the month, and maybe the fourth Saturday of the month if I do a beginner and advanced version again. We'll see. So yeah, thank you all for watching, and have a good day.